three little words, advertise, 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 describe Hall of Fame advertising agent Zalvanet's 40-year career working for all three of New Jersey's premier supermarkets, Kings, ShopRite, and Pathmark at different times. Zalvanet's career started with flags flying, music playing, balloons soaring, helicopters landing, billboards announcing, and customers sampling food in the aisles. As King Supermarkets, with its slogan, Where Mr. Joe Saves You Dough, held a grand opening for its 20th and largest supermarket by announcing that Mr. Joe was out of his teens. Zalvanet's boss, Joe Bildner, opened the first King Supermarket in Summit, New Jersey in 1936. Joe Bildner was a born advertiser and promoter. Every King Supermarket store opening was conducted like a military campaign. Every King's associate had his or her role to perform. Joe Bildner relied on his sales manager, Max Buck, to come up with innovative ideas to promote and advertise King's supermarkets. Buck worked with King's assistant sales manager, Salvinette. Together they invented King's roly-poly cartoon, Mr. Joe, who was featured in King's advertisements for more than a dozen years. Salvinette built a career by thinking up new ideas. His job was to create eye-catching newspaper advertisements with intriguing headlines such as, Mr. Joe didn't burn down that Acme, but wished his competitor good luck rebuilding. Mr. Joe offers a $500 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the burglar or burglars who broke into King's supermarket in South Orange. Mr. Joe crushed the price of milk and the dramatic story behind the death of the price-fixing milk law and also exclaiming that Mr. Joe will cut prices even if it kills him. All this was by way of saying that Mr. Joe's ads made news. Editors of food industry magazines wrote to King's Joe Bildner to tell him he was doing one of the most remarkable jobs in promotion throughout the country. The food industry paid attention to Mr. Joe's advertising techniques. It may have been cornball humor to some, but it was far from foolish, and there was nothing cornball about the profits. No advertising medium was left out. King sponsored a quiz program on WOR radio called, What Am I Offered? MC Bob Dixon asked customers in the studio audience to bid for baskets of food. Then there was television. A program called The King's Court was broadcast from Newark's Mosque Theater. Contestants won as much as $13,000 in major appliances during the run of the show. Salvinette designed the set. The man behind so many of these ideas was Sal Vanette. Vanette worked for Joe Bildner and King Supermarkets in the late 1940s. By the early 1950s, Vanette had established a name for himself in retail advertising and decided to strike out on his own. Vanette's considerable experience in supermarket advertising started to pay off. In 1951, Vanette was offered the job to create the first full-page newspaper advertisement ever run by then-new supermarket chain called ShopRite. He also helped ShopRite owners develop advertising for their private label brand. By 1954, Vanette was a principal in his own advertising agency, Howard Mintz and Vanette. The agency was established primarily to do advertising for ShopRite. Vanette recalls his early days. The train that was the first ad was symbolic of the power of a train, a locomotive, an engine pulling this tremendous hundred cars or whatever. It's strength, it's power. That power and our bringing that to you, the public, is going to save you money. That's the strength. It was true. We may not have owned a big warehouse then, but they sure as hell bought the food as in, in, for them in carnivals. It was true. They were bringing it to these small stores then. But these small stores were able to compete against the giant AMP then. Well, the warehouse was built to serve the public. It was news. And if it's going to be news, we wanted the public to know 
that we had this tremendous warehouse that's going to save them money. Because we're going to buy better, we're going to warehouse better, and we're going to have our stores sell the product for less money. Honest. Why not capitalize on it? But it's saluted. It showed growth. It showed here's another store. Here's another. We're growing. We're moving. You ought to come shop with us. Actually, the statement that carried ShopRite the longest was very simple three words. Why pay more? Now, that was for years. Uh, we picked that up and used it. It was not created by ourselves. Uh, other people had used it. But we adopted it. And it became our, our Bible. It was our way to go. Every ad that was headed was, why pay more? The Net also arranged photograph opportunities with public personalities as a way to promote stores and products. Shoppers saw King's Alan Bildner with Mrs. America in 1952, or a King's event featuring comedian Jerry Lewis. Ads featuring sports heroes such as Yankee greats Yogi Berra and Elston Howard caught shoppers' attention. Even Mona Lisa got into the act. Beginning in 1968, the Net's career took another turn. This time, he was hired to devise a massive advertising campaign to call attention to a supermarket chain with a new name. It was a blitz campaign arranged by three men, Herbert Brody, Milton Perlmutter, and Alex Edigman, who, as heads of newly formed Supermarkets General Corporation, decided to withdraw from Wakefern Food Corporation and ShopRite Supermarket Merchandising Groups in order to launch Pathmark Supermarkets. Pathmark became Vinette's largest individual account. Once again, Vinette came up with new ideas. Pathmark started to advertise heavily on television. Way ahead of his time, Vinette created commercials that called for discounts for seniors and posting of prescriptions in Pathmark's pharmacies. Vinette won numerous awards. Awards were important, but Vinette always reminded his associates that our advertising has to ring the register or it hasn't been successful. Zal Vinette's television commercials are legend in the advertising industry. The commercials reflected their time. During the 1973 energy crisis, Vinette featured the Newark Boys Choir singing a toe-tapping song, Put Out the Lights. At Pathmark, we've turned down our lights, our heat, our outside signs. Of course, we keep our refrigeration on 24 hours a day to keep your food fresh. At Pathmark, we're here to help you. Vinette also gave a multicultural flavor to Pathmark's commercials. If you ask Vinette at any point in his career, who's minding the store, you can bet he always had the answer. Inducted into New Jersey's Advertising Hall of Fame, Zalvanet was New Jersey's ad man number one.